Good evening to you, viewers. Once again, this is the Church of Nazarene Baptist District Family Forum. Glad to be with you again. And, um, well, hope you are doing all right. Hope the new year has started good for you. Well, into this program, we complete the two part series we have been sharing on new beginnings. And I trust you benefit, benefited from our last chat um, where we zeroed in on new beginnings and what are some of the obstacles uh, we may come across as we seek to have a new start, so to speak. And we're thinking it's quite appropriate, as Ryan Kelman said last week, yeah, you can have new beginnings anytime, but we're thinking that at the beginning of the year is a good time to consider um, new beginnings, Ryan Kelman. Yes, um, before I leave, a very pleasant evening to you. And uh, uh, in this segment, we want to look at some very specific um, issues that person may need to, to, to process and to be able to um, you know, start that new beginning because of these, you know, antecedent challenges. So, so, so new beginnings sometimes have to be looked at in terms of specific issues that you you've, you've worked with or you struggle with. How do you, how do you change those issues as you commence on a, on a new journey? Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, we we'll pray with you, and then we we'll back with you in a moment. Father, we thank you again for this privilege. We don't take it lightly where we can share with the listening and real public on various topics impacting the family. Lord, our objective, as you have led us, is to help to enrich our family life, to make, give us a better Barbados. So give us the courage, because it takes courage to make, to make changes. It takes courage not only to make changes, but to sustain them and to make wise choices. We pray even as we would share today on this topic of new beginnings, that you will guide us, and indeed that you would download some truths in our hearts that we'll be able to share with our viewers. So we thank you, Lord, for doing just that, for Christ's sake. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, viewers, we'll be back with you in a moment as we explore this topic of new beginnings. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. All right, back with you. So I want to share a Bible verse with you again from the book of Philippians chapter 3. And we're reading a few verses there. Philippians chapter 3, and we're using the NIV version. Um, verse 12 says, Not that I have already obtained all this, I have been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken, taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So a decision, yes, the looking back, we Recognize we can look back, but to learn from what the past has presented, not to be stuck in the past, but to look back for reflection and so on. But mm. as Paul said, I press toward the goal, so you have to set some goals. Mm -hmm. What it is that we want to change? Mm -hmm. Because new beginnings has to do um, with uh, about changes, mm -hmm. making changes. I, 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 I know, and uh... And that reminds me of a quote that said that success is not, is not the end and uh, failure is not fatal. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because even there, as Paul would have written that particular text, you know, he would have gone through a whole list of things that would make him, 
you know, someone that could boast, yeah. you know, uh, be successful as the eighth day of the Benjamin, Hebrew of Touch the Law, mm -hmm. Pharisee, and mm -hmm. you know, all these sort of things, right? And uh, and so so they can be the, the good things mm -hmm. that can define us and yeah. we rest in our laurels, yeah. and they can be the bad things as well that define yeah. us. Right. And therefore, we rest in the place where uh, of despair. Yeah. And so I think I think the issue there for Paul really is is not to allow anything to define us in our past, yeah. but that we're forever pressing forward mm -hmm. uh, to become the best person mm -hmm. that God desires us to become. But that's a good point you made, because sometimes when we talk about looking back, um, oftentimes it may appear that we're only talking about looking ne back. Negative stuff. Negative stuff. But the danger in looking back, uh, we can get, uh, in terms of good things, we can get fix a fixation on how well we have done last year. That's yes, right. All yes, the right. beautiful things we've done last year. That's right. And in fact, I mean, even think I can never surpass that. That's right. And and you live in the past. Yes. So I think Paul has made a beautiful point. Yes. Oh, I've made great accomplishment. Yes. But I'm not going to fi be fixed fixed on that because mm. yes. I want to even want to greater things. Right. And, yeah. and and because I mean our our journey with Christ is a day by day journey. Um, new experiences, yeah. new joys, yeah. new challenges. And, and you build on what? Has yeah, been yeah. As you move more and more into yeah. into to who God has called us to be, yeah. you know, and what God has called called us for heavenward, mm -hmm. you know. And of course, a person will see that as a salvation experience. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that's that's the person mm -hmm. that God yeah. wants us to become. Yeah. You know, um, and through his salvation work in our lives, yes, yeah. right? Uh, so, so the point I'm making though is that, as a believer, as an individual generally, as a believer mm -hmm. specifically, mm -hmm. uh, we all ought to allow ourselves to be defined um, by events of our past. But we, we should be forever mm -hmm. trying to find uh, uh, new experiences, um, new ways of changing ourselves mm -hmm. into becoming more and more. Uh, our best self. You know, I'm um, very telling that even as we talk, there are persons who would say, you know, well, I'm not a Christian, mm -hmm. but when the new year opens, I'm going to make that change. Mm -hmm. So, so one of the changes some persons may want to make this year is to become, uh, we're, we're to give ourselves to God. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, the Bible talks about in Second Corinthians 5.17, that in Christ, we are a new creation. Mm -hmm. And that's the best kind of new beginning there is. Mm -hmm. But even although we are... Because it, it, it results in a change of perspective. There you go. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, But sometimes people got get stuck in that new experience. In Christ, there is a new creation. But I always say, as you have hinted just now, that uh, it's not just where you start. It's like coming through the door into a new building, but I came in, it is true, salvation, but I remain at the door. Mm -hmm. I don't even come in and explore all the things that are within the, mm -hmm. the room. So salvation is a new experience. But we want to encourage persons to seek um, Christ. Um, it's more of a, beyond salvation. That's right. What are the... What are the right. Avenue, yeah. what are the horizons that don't yeah. want to take us through? Uh, it, don't stop at that entrance. Yeah, you know, for, I, I have been saying for a while that um, salvation ought to impact three very important domains of our lives. Of, of course, uh, to impact our spirituality and our connection with God, mm -hmm. our relationship with God, that's, that's a given. Yes. Because when man sinned, man, man felt the relationship with God. In the way that God had a design man to, to, to have, you know, in terms of that that deep in the personal connection where God came in the garden, the cool of the day. Personal. And God had a great rapport with man. Mm -hmm. But we, we sometimes miss two other elements of that whole issue of the fall, which to me are also repaired during our, our salvation walk as believers. The second one was all in the personal uh, realities because when man sinned, there was conflict between himself and the woman. Mm -hmm. And that began an interpersonal kind of a, of a reality for all of us. And therefore, <laughs> when we are saved, it ought to also impact mm -hmm. our interpersonal connections as well. So if we, if we love the Lord, but that does not eventuate our love for one another, 
then there's something wrong there because Reasonable. because because our salvific experience uh, should result in a, a deep connection with God, but also connection with, with with others. And the third the third leg or component is a relationship with ourselves, because remember when Adam sinned, he began to blame. You know, I didn't want to take responsibility. It's the woman who gave me, of course, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, and so, being saved should result in a a new connection with our own selves, so we can become the the, the, the best the best person that we can become. So there must be an element of self development. Yeah. If as a Christian, there's no there's no element of self development. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. uh, something must be wrong. It's wrong with our faith. So our identity. Uh, uh, that old identity change, yes. but we talked about the old has passed and yes. new has become. Yes. So, um, viewers, we are talking here about new mm. beginnings, and we are saying that the best new beginning they can be a good place to start if you have always planned to change. And we can't change on your own, we, we need that divine assistance uh, for us to make that change. And God is willing to change us that we can become what? You know, the best of ourselves. Yes, right. And reach our potential. Isn't yeah. it amazing that we all have potential for tremendous growth and, yes. and beauty? Um, if we remain in ourselves and try to accomplish it in ourselves, we have significant problems. But with God's help, and of course, as Roman Gellman said, with the help of others in our lives, we can make tremendous things. You know, I have a, I have a uh, 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 church, you know, um, I don't think you might be calling his name, you know, Anderson Taylor, he's always talking about eagles. Mm -hmm. God wants to be eagle Christians, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and and that means that our, our commitment really should be to, uh, to should be to, to, to doing things the, the right way, you know. Uh, there should be a sense whereby, whereby excellence is our only, our only um, destination. And, 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 if, and, so, and so I believe that in terms of even if we start the, the new year, the new beginnings, you know, that our focus should be to become uh, excellent at what we do. And of course, excellence is not a destination, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. uh, because what would be excellent in 2021, mm -hmm. we may not see us being excellent in 2022. We may want to push ourselves to the great heights, to, to deeper depths. Yes. But the point I'm making, though, is that it should be that persistence and that continuance yes. of growth. Yes. That's the point I want to make. Yes, great point. Mm -hmm. But you know, as we said earlier on, we want to zero into some areas. Um, you're listening to us. Um, there may be areas that we may touch that you're working on. Um, for example, start a new career, um, start a new family. Uh, of course, that doesn't necessarily happen at the end of the year, but uh, <laughs> starting a, a relationship, mm -hmm. um, changing your lifestyle. You, 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 you. Uh, you're changing your lifestyle radically for whatever reason you realize it's necessary. Um, life after death of a lost one. Well, it could be a spouse, it could be um, a close friend, or maybe a family member has passed on and you have that great synergy. And maybe they have died suddenly. Mm -hmm. You need to prepare for it. Um, and we want to be practical here. Sometimes even life after a divorce. Divorce when he came through. You're in, and here we are, perched on the, on, on the threshold of a new year, and the, the, a new relationship. We have to move out, the person moved out, or whatever. I have a children to deal with now on my own, vice versa. These are yes. realities. <laughs> uh, how, do we, how do we deal with that? Yeah. Or someone having a new, um, new baby. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we saw when they talked about at Christmas time, how many new babies were born? Mm -hmm. Those are new beginnings. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, we talk about new things, but new things can bring pressure. That's right. It could be a new job, mm -hmm. or it might come a new prom a new promotion. Yes. Right. Yes. And with the the, the the joy and the celebration, the promotion can be a new responsibilities. responsibilities you know? Yes. So mm -hmm. so we want to explore some of these things and retirement. Oh, yeah. You the people who retire well, they they, they um, got their final paycheck. In terms of the job, 30, Jan, December 31st. Yes. A lot of people retire at the end of the year somehow yeah, yeah. and they start a new journey. Yes. Uh, I mean, I mean, in, in the context, they want to start their past retirement. Yeah, I think, I think retirement is a biggie for me, though. Um, not that I'm close to retirement, but because <laughs> I, I see the adverse effects it has had on persons over the years uh -huh. and uh, who, are, who are persons that were very 
vibrant and uh, uh, full of, of, of gusto. Mm -hmm. And they retire, and then it just seemed, it seemed, seemed to just, just fade away. And, and so one of the things that I normally say in terms of retirement, though, is that there must be a retirement strategy. Mm -hmm. And not just simply about money, because I think many persons do the money part very well. But mentally prepared. You know, but mentally prepared for the fact that for 40 years, mm -hmm. I've been going to this job, mm -hmm. you know, uh, every morning I'm leaving home at 637, mm -hmm. I get in the office for 8, mm -hmm. you know, I've been working until 435, and coming home. And so, in some ways, my job has really yeah. organized my life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll see you after work, I'll see you before work. Mm -hmm. I see on my vacation from work. So, so the job has become an organizing principle. Yeah. And when that job it ceases... Yes, yes. Operating. yes. Mm -hmm. So when that job ceases, now you have a, a huge gaping hole. You know, as a business... Does that mean that if my job ceases, do I cease? Sometimes it happens to people. <laughs> and so, uh, identity, especially yeah. especially yeah. males. Yeah. You know, a lot, a lot, a lot of males. It can be scary. Though. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we have, we, our identity is both in our jobs. You know, uh, females are a little bit different in that they have uh, a lot of different self aspects, you call it, you know, where they, mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, they, you know, they, they have their, you know, they have their friends and they do stuff, they go together, they go to shop together as friends and they go travel. But we met it tell me more. And our job, was a more or less our number one. That's right. Um, goal, perhaps. That's okay? right. Sometimes That's even right. Even before our family. That's right. We put job at number one. But Mr. Again, I just want to ask. You know, people are here we're talking, Pastor Fry, or I'm talking about new beginnings and talking about retirement. Is that paradoxical? Well, but or it's, is it new? it's new because, I mean, you're coming to the end of one phase of your life. Yeah. And you're beginning a new phase, right. you know. Mm -hmm. um, a new phase that has potential for. Uh, wonderful opportunities, you know, where you can, you know, manage your schedule mm -hmm. at your own at your own speed, where you can, more free time. you know, do the things you always wanted to do, you couldn't get a chance to do before. Yeah. Maybe you want to do more benevolent work, yeah. you want to go into schools and, and maybe uh, mentor, mm -hmm. you know, youngsters. Maybe you want to uh, start some new project at home, yeah. uh, kitchen garden, perhaps. Yeah. I mean, there are so well, many opportunities. That's right. So, so I think one of the issues, though, <laughs> even before one retires, mm -hmm. is to make a list of all the things you always wanted to do mm -hmm. and never got a chance to do. Yeah. And then choose about three or four of those things you're going to start with yeah. when you retire. So you have a, 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 a kind of a skeleton kind of schedule. Why, why you want to do what you want to do. Not, not, not too pressing, because you still go to the beach on mornings and swim yeah. with your friends, yeah. you know, and, 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 and make some sport cracks of jokes. Mm -hmm. But you will have some, something that will give you a level of measure of purpose as well, yeah. you know, which, which, which can be lost at times when you retire. As you said, don't always have to be um, sending around things that are super, uh, what should I say, um, serious. You want to have some recreational stuff in there as well. Some light stuff in there as well as you move on. Because, you know, you have to guard against being over-occupied now. You're mm -hmm. retired. Mm -hmm. It's a new beginning, and mm -hmm. you find yourself, um, in a sense, burnt, burnt out in the retirement. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, 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 so you don't want... Overcommitment? Yeah, you don't, you don't want to have a share that becomes uh, one as pressure. You know, you don't want to feel as though yes. uh, you have to, yeah. you know. Um, so you're right, though. You want to go at your own pace, at your own rate. Mm -hmm. um, so you can enjoy retirement, your retirement years. Mm -hmm. But also, you can still find some meaning yes. uh, in those years as well. Ram, um, I've heard some stories. I mean, both of us are counselors, so we know um, the people actually, I mean, they're not always about it, really fear, af afraid of, of retirement. <laughs> I mean, real fear. You know, I've heard of a situation, uh, and it's some reality about it. Once a person has retired, they will still drive their car to work. Or a car in the car park. Yeah. You're not going in the building. A car in the car park mm -hmm. of where they used to go. Obviously, in the discreet place that nobody can't see them. But my point is, mm -hmm. at the, what what will cause a person to do that? Well, you can imagine. Think about it. For because four you your work before? for forty years, <laughs> you've done that every day, mm -hmm. except of course vacations and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so your whole, you know, mind mm -hmm. uh, routine, maybe even your brain have been worried in a particular way, yeah. you know, 40 years of doing um, the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very natural. And even though you've retired, mm -hmm. which, is, which is an event, mm -hmm. the transition has not yet occurred, yes. Yes. you know, and um, 
And so the issue though really is to, is to begin that process of working through the transition. And, and, and like I said, that might mean uh, creating a schedule for yourself, it allows you to redirect your energies into something different mm -hmm. uh, as you're ready to begin you know, that, that process. Also, also mean that coming up to the time that you're about to leave, uh, mentally, you have to begin to separate yourself. That's right. From the from the from the top. Yeah, and and, and and that's something that many persons don't think about, though. But I believe that um, at retirement, a person should be able. Well, well, well they said person should start planning for retirement before they retire. But also, there should be some way of saying goodbye to those persons who yes, you've yes. worked with the last how many years. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we made a point earlier in the, night, in the previous program, the idea of celebrating endings. Mm. And that is a good point. When you retire, that point is something of value. Mm -hmm. When you meet with your person you've worked with for a while, and it's not just to give you a gift, mm -hmm. but that celebrating the ending um, and, and, and moving on. Mm -hmm. Can can be you know you reflect, mm -hmm. you have some fun, maybe some food, mm -hmm. um, and you talk about old times. Right. And there's that celebration of ending and mm -hmm. as you move on. And, t and tears and tears as well too. Well, yeah, of course. And tears as well because because yeah, endings endings are, are never are never easy. Yeah. Yeah. But but I think we mentioned it in the in the first program. But I think I'll probably top it this one as well. Mm -hmm. And of support. Yeah. Because sure. because even even though we might have uh, made a decision mm -hmm. um, to start afresh, to reboot, to reset. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not always a, a clean break. Yes. And because of our emotions and, and, our, and our memory, mm -hmm. there are times when we find ourselves maybe going back to where we were before in our situation. Mm -hmm. Let's say it was about relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they say this, this is very toxic for me, I don't want it anymore. Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, separated ourselves. We've said to mm -hmm. the male, the female, the man, the woman, you know, this is not. Working out. Decision. Yeah, we have to go our own way, you know. Um, and of course, the tears fall, but you decide that's what you want to do. But then after you pick up your phone and call. That's again. right. You feel you feel alone, yeah. you know. And then you can restart. And then you can restart. Yeah. And then when that begins to happen over a number of probably years or, or, or yeah. situations, yeah. then you feel as though you're helpless. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think one of the, one of the elements, though, uh, is to build into that whole new beginning mm -hmm. a support network. Yeah that allows you and, and, and that person know mm -hmm. you know as i said to you before that that's your purpose in my life yeah. for the next few months yeah. when i feel down and low i'm going to call you yeah. and you just to give me some support mm -hmm. um so that you come back to that same person again mm -hmm. and before you know it bang you're back together mm -hmm. and the same you know toxic reality mm -hmm. starts all over again yeah. i never i never um significant um change of a new beginning is let's like, say when the children have left all left, you know, you and may have two or three children. Emptiness syndrome. Yeah. Um, so that emptiness is a new, a new experience. Of course it is. How do we deal with that? You know, there, there's nobody in the house to cook for. I, cut, I left to cook for everybody. That's just sometimes it's just you as a person or to be a couple. This emptiness. Do we think about that yeah. as a new beginning? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Farley, the whole MNS syndrome is one that can be fraught with much, with much challenge as well too, because sometimes the children represent the glue that holds the yeah. marriage together. Yeah. And uh, when I mean, the children leave, sometimes the glue leaves, and yeah. and the couple themselves mm -hmm. have not nurtured their relationship yeah. over the years. Yeah. That's critical. And uh, and and so they become two, two strangers in, in the same house. Loneliness. Yeah, you know, uh, and retirement does that as well too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because the job acts as a distraction. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you retire, you're both in the same space, and all kind of conflict yeah, breaks right. loose yeah. because now, for the first time, mm -hmm. you know, in many, many years, mm -hmm. you're juxtaposed, yeah. you know. Well, that um, explains why some persons have married 46 years and here they divorce. divorce. Yes, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Because so we're seeing, we're seeing a trend in that way yeah. now, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, so, the, so the the issue then, the, or the solution though, really has to do with one nurturing relationship, nurturing relationship over the years. Yeah. Uh, so when the children go, you still have a until the children go. Right. And, and I normally say that Refrain. that that it starts with two and it ends with two. Yeah. Well, for the most part, there you, go. you know, right? Um, I mean, it ends with one. Yeah, with one, two, right? <laughs> but but nurture that relationship. Yeah. 
And I would say the second thing is to find Friendship. Friendship. find other way, find other ways for for that kind of mm -hmm. um, social connection. It might be that you have a few friends that you do yeah. stuff with. You know, you can go to different, kind of a club. different houses at different times of the group. of the week to do stuff yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the dinner parties, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So find find other ways for that social yeah. engagement to occur. Time has come. Yes. Where the house will, and the nest is empty. That's right. You have to start thinking yes. of relationships. You got to plan for it. Yeah. So, so, so every new beginning has to be planned for. Right. That's basically it. All right. So, I mean, there are a number of things we can talk about. But um, we, we are seeking here just to, as I said, <laughs> start a discussion. Um, so, we're going to pause here. I'll be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum. Shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Time has gone so quickly. I don't know where you are at in terms of your starting um, new starts or whatever. Well, that has to do with a new career, has to do with starting a family, has to do with the retirement, has to do with the emptiness or... If perhaps your loved one has has gone and you you you, you would have that void in your life, or it may even a situation where you are stuck in a very um, explosive relationship, domestic violence, Mr. Kelman. Yes. Uh, and you, you say, well, at the beginning of the year, I'm mm -hmm. going to bring this to an end. Yes, and um, and that can be a very difficult decision because I mean, not I mean, of course, we got to talk about the. The, 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 the sex with a person don't want to accept it. Mm -hmm. And there are issues of stalking and that kind of stuff, which can happen. But of course, you know, those are fair tactics, which you have to kind of um, basically just confront, you know, um, from very early, mm -hmm. whether it's through the law or whatever um, mechanisms you use. Mm -hmm. But but the, the issue of domestic violence, though, um, is one that can become very cyclical because, as you would know, the person doesn't, doesn't you know, beat you all the time. You know, um, you know they, they they might have that physical stuff, but then they give you some great gift, you know, some nice, you know, something, you know, as a way to kind of a, a person live for those good moments. And yes. uh, so to, to to make that decision mm -hmm. is to determine you don't want the values, mm -hmm. neither do you want the good moments either. But sometimes too, the person will be providing finance, finances. So if I bring an end to this and start something new. But it might not start. That's right. So, so one thing you've got to be prepared for, uh, for the, is that your life style may have to change. Yeah. You know, the things you want to enjoy, you might have to, to do without. Because, you know, with the good lifestyle, mm -hmm. there's also the physical stuff which you don't want. Yeah. And therefore, that must become yeah. for you yeah. uh, once you're prepared to the release. Yeah. 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 I know we've dealt with this topic before, but we we're just talking about change and yeah. the beginnings. Like, we trust that if you're where you need, perhaps you need help, seek help. But, 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 but when you may make those sort of breaks, they should be definite. All right, perhaps we revisit that another time. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, closing prayer. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Almighty God, we give you thanks today for the ability, Lord, to have new beginnings. We thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. We thank you, Lord, for your superintendency of our lives, Lord, so we can be infused with your power as we start again. Gracious Lord, today I pray for those who may be struggling, who may feel as though that their life is not going in the right direction. They've made several New Year's resolutions, but somehow they're not happening in the way that they would have desired. I pray God for your continued strength. I pray God for your continued motivation in their lives. And I pray, Father, that they will be able to turn things around. So at the end of the year, you'll look back with a sense of joy when they have fulfilled their expectations and their desires. Father, we give you thanks even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, viewers, God bless you. And someone says, new beginnings are often disguised as painful endings. Because help, it can happen. God bless you.